Previously on The Bill. So your wife's been involved in a car accident. You need to go to St Hughes. The children are what she does it all for without them. She's got you. I don't know if I'm enough. She's dead, Jane. They're all dead. Superintendent Akaro wanted to be here today to reopen the station. But because of yesterday's tragic events, he can't be with us. Our thoughts are with him during this difficult time, as they are with all those who lost their lives in the station fire. This reopening is dedicated to their memory. Thank you. Gina. The investigation into the crash that killed Alan's family has been overseen by traffic. I want to make sure it's handled properly. So I've asked Terry to liaise with them on anything they need to know. Have you spoken to Adam yet? Uh, I called his home, but no answer. Have traffic assigned a family liaison officer? Well, the collision team thought that under the circumstances, you might want to take on that role. I've cleared it with the investigating officer. Me? Well, you know him better than anybody. But I've got to be somewhere later on. There's something more important than being there for Adam. I just don't think I'm the right person for the job, Jack. Well, who else is he going to talk to? Okay. Ramon, it's Terry. I want to run something past you. Maybe we can meet up sometime this morning. But not at the station, yeah? All right, call me. Bye. This is our Meadows? Yeah. This is Graham Minton, investigating office and a police investigation unit. Right. Terry, yeah. we'll go to my office. Okay. Look, I know we're all shaken by yesterday's events, but I want you to look at a new sex offender who's just come into the public protection unit. Okay. I've only scanned the file quickly, but I need you to monitor a Mike Harrison just released from prison for indecently assaulting a teenage girl. Has the victim been contacted? No, she was moved to Scotland. It's not there I'm concerned about. Harrison was also suspected of abusing his own daughter. Kelly, she was eight at the time. Nice guy, then. Romani's not until later, so any problems, give me a shout. Got it. All right. So there's no eyewitness. Nobody saw the collision take place? No, and according to the police investigator, there are no skid marks on the road to indicate that either driver breaks suddenly. There was a set of temporary lights at the accident, but they've been checked and they're not faulty. So what about the cars? Both been checked, no signs of mechanical failure. So we're looking at human error? Seems like it. And what about the other driver? Her name is Tamsin Parker, Gov. She hit Mrs. Akaro side on, didn't she? Doesn't make her guilty. According to the report, she was pretty hazy, but she did say the lights were green. Assuming she's feeling up to it, we're asking him for a chat today. Superintendent Akaro has lost his wife and children in this incident. We need to know what happened. I know. There's no CCTV footage of the scene, unfortunately. The only camera was at the other end of Wells Avenue, and it doesn't cover the junction. Yeah, that doesn't help us much, does it? We also found Denise Akaro's mobile phone went under a car seat. It was broken, but we haven't examined to check for any calls that may be made around that time. It's possible she was using it in the car. As I said to you on the phone, Mr. Harrison, my name is DC Susie Sim from Sun Hill. I'm from the Public Protection Unit and I'll be monitoring you over the next few months, liaising with you over work opportunities and generally discussing how things are going. Spying, you mean? No. I'll be paying regular visits to see how you're getting on, that's all. Lucky me. You'll also need to see your probation officer. Already got a date. Anything work-wise? Oh yeah, they're falling over themselves to employ me. What do you think? I've registered with a couple of agencies for kitchen pottering, if that's okay with you. As long as you stick to the terms of the sex offender order, do you understand what you have to do? Not go within 50 metres of a school or have unsupervised contact with anybody under 16. Think you have problems complying? No. I've learned my lesson as far as lying teenagers are concerned. Nina Compton was only 15. Going on 25. She was no angel. You indecently assaulted her. And my eldest daughter, Jodie, who was Nina's best friend, said she was lying through her teeth. You sound angry, Mr. Harrison. Nina's lies cost me three years of my life. They brainwashed my wife, Lynn, into thinking I'd done something to Kelly. I miss Kelly growing up. I've got a no-contact order against me, so I can't even see Kelly now. Wouldn't you be angry? Kelly's form teacher said at the time she was withdrawn and behaving strangely at school. Kelly was confused. Wouldn't you be with all that was going on? Did she ever say that I touched her? Didn't your wife Lynn believe you did? They fed Lynn a pack of lies. I did nothing wrong, and I am still Kelly's father. All I want is my family back. Are you saying you're going to try and see her? No. 
I'm saying I want to. Gina Gold. Yeah, I've got a radiotherapy appointment at 11. Uh, do you think you could put it back a few hours? 12.30 is the latest. No, no, no. Okay. I'll be there. Thank you. Adam, it's Gina. I was uh, dropping by your house to see if you're okay, but you don't seem to be here. Well, I hope you're all right, and uh, call me when you can. Oh. Gina Gold. Oh, Jack, hi. We've just had some news. We need to warn Adam. Warn Adam about what? We had Denise's mobile phone examined. We've just this minute heard back. She was on a call moments before impact. So it looks like it could be negligent driving on her part. How's he coping? Well, I don't know. He's not here. Actually, I've got an idea where he might be. All right, I'll call you later. Right. What are you doing here? We're well, looking for you. And I'm here as your FLO and friend. I've been trying to call. You'd never know, would you? Thought I lost everything here. Well, why have you come here? I needed to know what happened. The way I see it, Denise and the children were coming along here. The other driver must have shot out of that road there, flying straight into Denise, who wouldn't have had time to swerve and We've got some information, and I think it's best you hear it from me. Go on. Well, Denise did come along there, but we don't think it was her right of way. Because when we examined her phone, we think she was making a call when the incident happened. I don't believe you. You're saying the crash was Denise's fault. That's what we think happened. You're telling me my wife was responsible, aren't you? It's a possibility, Adam, yes. Yeah. Adam, I know how impossibly hard this is for you. I can't even begin to imagine. No, you can't. This is the number she called. Would you recognize it? Is this why you're here? No. I came to see that you were okay. The tailors. Malcolm often goes there after school. He used to go there after school. You knew Denise. Do you really think she'd be on a mobile phone and run through a red light with the kids in the back of the car? No, but we all make mistakes. Not Denise. No one's that will jeopardize the lives of our children. You're wrong about this, Jim. I need to get you home. No. There is nothing for you here. Okay. But well, you're wrong about this. Denise didn't cause the crash. I'm coming to the station with you. I want to know what's going on. You could help me, madam. I'm ill. <laughs> you're well enough to play football later on. You could help me clear up, couldn't you? Sorry, DC so. Oh, Susie, please. Thanks. I mean, you've got some homework to be doing. OK, OK. I know why you're here. I got a call about Mike's release. How do you feel about it? How do you think? Has Mike been in contact with you since he went to prison? No, he's not coming near. It's just the two of us now, just me and Kelly, no one else. What about your older daughter, Jodie? Uh, what about her? Do you see her? No. She, uh, she moved out before, um, just before Mike got arrested. That was why he went round to Nina Compton's to see if she knew where Jodie was. Right, and that's when the assault allegedly took place. 
But Nina thought Jody's reason for leaving home was something to do with your husband, didn't she? Uh, Jody denied that. What do you think? Well, I know that a lot of questions were asked. That was enough for me. Nothing was proved, but I could have lost Kelly. <laughs> That's why I agreed to them taking the no contact order out. I love my kid. Do you know where Jody is? In Canley, somewhere. I don't know. I don't see her. Lynn, can I ask you why? You seem like too doting a mother to cut all ties with your daughter. My relationship with my daughter's got nothing to do with this. I thought you were here to talk about Mike. I am. Of course. I saw Mike earlier. He's pretty adamant that he was falsely accused. Well, there were so many accusations at the time. Which one? Well, he claims Nina Compton lied and says that he never touched Kelly. There were too many questions. And I didn't want to risk Kelly being taken away from me. I think that he's going to try and fight the restriction on seeing Kelly. He can try, but he's not going to see her. That's what the order's for. Was Kelly physically examined? No, I didn't want her to be. I thought she'd been through enough trauma with having her dad being taken away and her sister leaving home. Did she admit anything to you? Why are you asking me all these questions? I didn't mean to upset you, Lynn. But the more I know about Mike, the better I can try to figure out what he might do. It's just that I've been asked so many questions in the past. Social services wanted to know about him, Jody, how a marriage, everything. I'd already lost Jody when she moved out. I didn't want to lose another. That's why I agreed to the no contact order. I'm sorry. I understand. I'm finished. Oh, well done, sweetie. Can I play fitty now? Yeah, sure you can. Look, here's my card. If Mike tries to make contact, you will let me know, won't you? Sure that he won't. Please, just let me know if you have any concerns. See you, Kelly. Bye. Hi, Rich. What do you reckon? It's good, isn't it? Well, I can't really see it like that. Yeah. I guess not. Sorry, that was a bit insensitive. No, you're all right. Excuse me. Tamsin Parker, I'm here to see PC Minton from the Collision Investigation Unit. I'll let him know you're here. Thank you. Hello. I'm DCI Meadows. Take a seat. Thank you for coming in. Uh, we don't have to do this today if you don't feel up to it. No. I want to help. So how are you feeling? OK. The hospital let me go home last night. And a few cuts and bruises. Nothing serious. I was very lucky. Do you... Do you know who the others were? Yes, we do. Yeah. It was a woman and two children, wasn't it? How's the husband? Well, he needs support, but we're doing everything we can for him. Adam, Adam, are you sure this is a good idea? As good as any. I went to pick up my daughter, Evie, from Brownies. Which direction are you travelling from? Darrow Road. There were roadworks and temporary traffic lights. What colour were the lights? Green. You sure? Yes. And then what happened? Take your time. <laughs> That's just it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, it's all right. I thought this would help. Help what? Help me remember. I can't remember what happened. Look, I think we should reschedule this for a couple of days, OK? We'll call you. I need to know. Does this mean it was my fault? Did I kill those people? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. 
You get the impression that Lynn Harrison believes the abuse allegations? I'm not sure. I don't believe she knows what to think. There's an older daughter, Jodie, and I want to trace her. She left home just before her father was accused of the assault. Well, didn't the police speak to her at the time? Yes, she backed her father up about the abuse, completely denied it. But for some reason, Lynn Harrison has no contact with her anymore. She wouldn't say why. I think there might be some answers in there about Mike. Do we need to involve her? Yes. If I'm going to monitor Mike Harrison, I could do with knowing everything about him. Kelly's safe with her mum, but I need to know what kind of stunts he's likely to pull. Are you dealing with, um, Mike Harrison? Yes, why? Cad just had a call of disturbance at a kid's football match. One of the parents rang in saying they recognised Mike Harrison. They leave a name? Yep, and a phone number. She says she knew him from years gone by. Apparently it's all kicked off. I think, not the football. I know, I've got it. <laughs> Lynn! I got here as quickly as I could. Where's Mike? What? One of the parents rang in to say they saw Mike here. With kids there? I haven't seen him. I would have rang you. Who said they saw him? I can't give you a name, but they said he was here. They saw him watching. Well, they must have got it wrong. I, uh, I would have told you if Mike had been here. Are you sure? I mean, how would he even know that Kelly was playing here? What are you saying? I've got an order against him. He's not allowed anywhere near us, and I didn't see him. The parent also said Kelly was upset. She certainly looks it. Yes, yeah, she hurt her leg. I tell you, girls are dirtier than boys when it comes to tackling. Lynn, did he threaten you? Because if he did, I can... How many times? I didn't see him. If Mike had been here, I'd tell you. What? Why was I deny that? I don't know. Kelly's leg looks fine to me. Well, it's not. Now, excuse me, I've got to check on my daughter. Adam. Didn't expect to see you here. Why? I'm the superintendent here. The death of my family is the subject of an investigation. Were there any witnesses to the crash? I'm afraid not. What about the other driver? They say anything? Well, they're in the process of being interviewed, but nothing yet. Okay, tell me what you do now. Well, uh, traffic had been over to uh, to the Taylor's house. I talked to Helen Taylor about the phone call. Uh, apparently, your son left his school bag in the house. So that's what the call was about. Helen only talked to Malcolm, though. She didn't talk to Denise. So the call had nothing to do with the collision. It would seem not. Good. I told you Denise would never use the phone in the car. So was Malcolm on the phone when it happened? Did Helen hear the crash? Well, it must have been just before. Uh, the timing must have been a few seconds out. Helen was the last person to speak to him alive. Did she say what they were talking about? Not really. Not really? I have every right to know. Well, uh, she said she heard Denise and Leah laughing and chatting in the background. I'm so sorry. Who's the investigating officer? Graham Minton. Good. I know him. Right, we've established Denise wasn't on the phone. What's next? Right, we. Okay. So to what do I owe the pleasure, then? Please. I wanted to talk to you before you came back to work today. I wonder if you knew anything about them. Antidepressants, why would I? Because they are addressed to you. And Roger found them in your post. Goodness sake! Well, I'm sorry. I was worried about you. I know how difficult things have been lately. Yeah, well, even if they were mine, I wouldn't be stupid enough to order them at work. Yeah, well, someone did, didn't they? Well, it was Margaret, obviously. I suppose. Terry, she's angry with me for trying to pull away from her. She's trying to hurt me. It's definitely Margaret. We just need to find proof. Okay, find out who ordered these tablets. You know, I've been watching her while I've been away. Do you think that's wise? Well, I've got to do something. Everybody thinks I'm incapable of doing my job. Including you, it seems. Now, listen. You leave Margaret to me. If she's behind this, I'll find proof of it. But you stay away from her, because you'll just make it worse. Are you stalking me? Like a bad penny. Been out. No. I heard different. You heard wrong. Hope so. 
because going to a young girl's football match in which your daughter was playing would be really stupid, wouldn't it? I guess so. Do that and you'll be sent straight back to prison. That's why I wouldn't do it. When you were in prison, were you in contact with Lynn? No. Have you been in contact with her since you've come out? No. She doesn't want anything to do with me. How would you know if you haven't been in contact? I'm assuming nothing's changed. I really think you should go home. They're trying to get rid of me. No. They say Minton. Who's that? Oh, it's a witness. She's got a cut above her eye. Last time I was in Parker, she was driving the other car. Um, we should let you get on. She killed my wife. She was driving the other car. She's hardly got a scratch on her. What does she say happened? She can't remember. My family are dead. And she can't remember anything. It's very soon after the incident. She's All right, thank you, Peter. Thank you. We're protecting the wrong person. We're not protecting anybody. I'm not remembering anything. She must be responsible. We don't know that. You don't seem to know anything, Jack. Perhaps you're not asking the right questions. I assure you we are. And I can assure you not knowing what happened to my wife and children. I'll tell you something. If you're not going to find out what happened to them, I will. find him at home. I found him at the collision site. What was he doing? Oh, trying to figure out what happened. Did he say anything? I mean, has he talked about how he's coping? Anything but. He's blocking it and focusing on the investigation. What are we going to do? Well, it's not going to help him be here, is it? We've got to try and get him home. I've had a thought. Will you help me do something? If we can, yeah. Bring the other driver in. I want to watch her being interviewed. I know Denise is driving. I've been to the scene. I can tell if she's lying. Well, it's not a matter of whether she's lying. It's whether she remembers or not. I don't believe that. Look, this is about your loved ones losing their lives, and no one should hear that. This is not about a car crash, Adam. I just want to help the investigation. Just leave it to us, Adam. We'll get to the bottom of it. But for now, you should go home. And do what? No one's there. And Denise's family. You need their support, and they need yours. I can't face them. But being here is not doing you any good. Okay. Get after him. Okay. I'm gonna sit here. Back of the wall facing the door. What's that about? Feng Shui? No, it's what the gunslingers did. So they could see who was walking in. Oh yeah, look. I've got something nice to you. I sit here, yeah, I can look at you, Donna. Sorry to interrupt, but Tony I just tended a burglary down at St. Hugh's Pharmacy. <clears throat> Drugs taken with a street value. Sleeping tablets, painkillers, morphine. Well, let's see if there are similar burglaries in other hospitals. Yeah, sure. We've got a pile of CCTV to wade through. Oh, yeah, another problem is the burglar made his exit through an adjoined laboratory and knocked over a lab play of samples on his way out. What does that mean? It means we're looking for an IC1 male, medium height, with a possible case of typhoid. Jodie Harris? Who are you? DC Sim, Sun Hill. Are you Jodie? I was wondering if I could have a word with you. What about? Your father. Can I come in? Did my mother give you my address? No. I got it from the electoral roll. Your mother says she doesn't know where you are. I sent loads of letters to Kelly. Mum knows if she wants to. So what's my father done now? He's just been released from prison. It makes no difference to me. I've no contact with my parents. Right. So he hasn't tried to contact you again? No. 
And I wouldn't see him if he did. Jody, why did you leave home? It's none of your business. Guess not. Look, I just wanted to get away. It's no big deal. Lots of kids leave home. Nothing more specific than that? No. I'm sorry to ask, Jody, but did your father abuse you in any way? No, he didn't. Did you know he was accused of abusing Kelly? When? Just after he was charged with indecently assaulting your friend Nina. Nothing was proven, but I believe he wants to see Kelly now. I'm sorry, I can't help. It's nothing to do with me. Don't worry, you have to do it. Jody. Just take this. What for? In case you want to talk. About anything. It might help your little sister. Tony, how serious is this typhoid? Well, when we spoke to the lab assistant, he says it causes fever, vomiting, diarrhoea, especially dangerous in the young and the old. And it's highly contagious. Right, we've checked all known burglars who live close to the hospital and fit the description. And? There's nothing. So what have you guys got? <sighs> well... There's this. Now, this guy fits the description. He's hanging about outside pharmacy department. And look, he's got something under his shirt. If we whisk it on a bit. Now, here he is again. Now, look, that is definitely, he's definitely got something under, isn't he? I mean, that could be anything. Could have been at the calf. <laughs> Why would he hide a sandwich under his jacket? Well, that's what we thought. What's odder is that he didn't leave the hospital. We've checked all of the tapes. Every hospital exit's been covered. Now, he doesn't leave any of them. But, Steve, we do pick him up a few minutes later. Now, if this is our man, he's heading in the A&E department. Thank you, Phil. Yeah. What's that for? What do you think it's for? Uh, well, I don't know. Fancy dress? Very funny. You're telling me you look ridiculous. Look, I don't know about you, but I don't want to catch a dose of typhoid. Oh, you're not serious. I get paid to catch criminals, all right? Not infectious diseases. Well, this isn't the plague, Phil. And really, it's not that contagious. The only people at risk are the very old and the very young. Or in your case, the very hypochondriac. It's better to be safe than sorry. Well, I'm not wearing one. Oh, that's charming. Listen, you are worrying too much. Our guy probably hasn't caught anything. And even if he has, just don't get too close. What if we have to arrest him? Well, then I'll do it. And what if you catch it? Well, then I'll make sure I don't get too close to you. Do you want me to come in with you? I don't like to think of you in there on your own. Don't you have better things to do? No, I don't. I'll be fine on my own. Forget it. I'm coming in. And you can make the tea. You will let me know if you find out anything. Yes. You don't seem certain, do you? I need to know. Yeah, I understand that, and I will let you know, but also you need to let go of the investigation. And do what? Because you need to... Of grief. Were you uh, flirting with DS Nixon earlier? No. You've got no chance with her. It'll never work. Shut up. Right, our suspect's in there. Well, let's go and get him then. No, not yet. Well, why not? Well, that's why. Maternity's full, so she's giving birth down here. Now, I've asked the nurse to bring our man out, and I've warned her about the infection, all right? Last chance, you want a mask? No, I'm fine, thank you. Whoa, uh, D.S. Nixon, Sunhill, and you are... D. Simmons. What's going on? Mr. Simmons, I'd like to ask you some questions about a theft from the hospital pharmacy. You what? My wife's having a baby in there. Well, no, I appreciate that, but this is very urgent. So's this. Whoever broke into the pharmacy tried to leave via the lab and accidentally knocked over some research samples. So? Well, this person could be carrying the typhoid bacteria. It's highly contagious. You haven't me on, right? No, we're not. It could be a big risk to anyone you touch, especially a pregnant woman. And newborn babies. 
Right, so if you committed that theft early, you shouldn't go back in there. But I have to be there. Is that an admission? No. Well, it's your call, Mr Simmons. Actually, you might be interested in some CCTV we have. Looks uncannily like you. I got the impression earlier you needed to be somewhere. I don't worry, it's nothing that can't wait. I've made too many mistakes. I should have been here more. I should have spent more time. I should have been here yesterday. Don't say that. You gave your family everything you could. You made them very happy. Please. No, I mean it. Denise is a wonderful woman and a great mother. You of all people don't have to say that. Yes, I do. You were with her at the scene yesterday, weren't you? What did she say? She was very calm and in control. I never felt I really deserved it, you know? How do you mean? She was brave, honest. I couldn't even be that for her at the hospital. That's not true. You were very brave. But I didn't tell her, did I? About the children. She would have wanted to know it. I just couldn't face it. And what good would it have done if you had told her? Oh, you don't understand. We had trust, honesty. But when it mattered, I came up short. I was always short of the mark. Now, listen to me. You have to hang on to the positives. That's all we can do. You know, none of us know what's coming around the corner. You don't know what it's like to go through something like this. I never said that. I need to be alone now. Oh, Adam. Please. Just go. earlier. It's Gina Gold. I'm due for a radiotherapy treatment at 12.30, but I could be there in 10 minutes. Oh, good. Right. Thank you very much. Bye. You all right? Yeah. Well, is everything okay? Everything's fine. You have got the most gorgeous little baby girl. I want to see Steve, her. Steve, she's got these tiny little fingers and these beautiful big blue eyes. Congratulations. Can't I see her? Well, no, you can't because you're under arrest and also we need to get you checked out. Oi! Hey. Steve! Hey, get off! There! Oh. Oh. Now, it turns out that you got form for theft and burglary. But I suppose that wasn't you either. What was it, a long labour? You see, most expectant fathers go out to buy flowers. Not squeeze in a quick robbery between contractions. <coughs> I said I didn't want to see you. What are you doing here? Come inside. No! No, what are you doing here? I just need to talk. Everything all right? Jodie called me. She asked me to come over. What did you do? Well, like I said on the phone, I don't want to see you. Why are you here, Lynn? I decided I'd like to see my daughter. Is that such a crime? I don't care. What are you doing here? Jodie. No, just leave me alone. Lynn. Get lost. Jodie? Jodie, are you all right? What's the matter? Why did your mother come? What did she want from you? I can't say. The FME seen Simmons. You can relax. Turns out he wasn't infected after all. Sure. That's something. Still not a good day for him otherwise. What do you mean? I'm well, getting nicked the day your baby's born. It's not exactly ideal, is it? Well, that's his lookout, isn't it? He used the fact that she was in labour to commit a crime. Yeah, but it's not one to tell grandchildren, is it? Be there for the birth? Yeah, I was, till I got nicked. Grandchildren? Get all soppy on me. <laughs> Just saying. Maybe you are ill.
Jody. Was that the first time you've seen your mother since you've left home? Do you know why she would come all of a sudden? Was it because of your father being released? No. It's because of you. She came to warn me not to speak to you. Why? In case I told you what happened. To you? <laughs> Jody, were you abused? I can't do this. Yes, you can. No. Why are you doing this to me? Doing what? <laughs> Digging it all up. Jody, I want to help you. He can't hurt you now. This isn't about him. You don't get it, do you? Did Mum tell you it was all his fault? Did she say she'd do anything to protect Kelly? Yes. It's all lies. This isn't just about him. It's about both of them. She's part of it. She let my father arrange for those men to come round. How old were you when the abuse started? Nine. I just remember the pain. Shh. It's okay. I had to go to school and pretend the pain wasn't there. I thought it was happening because I'd done something wrong. You hadn't. It wasn't your fault. Then why did they treat me like that? I don't know. Jodie, what did your parents do to you? They didn't do anything. They never touched me. I don't understand. They let other people do that. How? They let other men have sex with me. Dad organised it. Mum let it happen. Why? They're supposed to look after me. How long did this go on for? Till I left. Seven years? Every Wednesday. Why Wednesday? Pub night. I'd lie in bed waiting, waiting. And then I'd hear them come home. Them? Dad and one of his mates. Sometimes more. He'd bring them up. A stank of drink. Jody, where was your mother? Downstairs. She turned the volume up on the TV as soon as I came upstairs. To block the noise out. When I left, she turned it down again. Like nothing happened. Why didn't you do anything to stop them? It's got this power over her. If you're relying on her to protect Kelly, forget it. That's why Mum came today, to warn me not to let you lot know. So Kelly would get it if I did. Listen to me. You need to make a statement. Help me stop this from happening again. It's my fault, isn't it? I ran away. I didn't stay to help Kelly. No. It wasn't your fault. You were frightened. It's understandable. I knew what they were capable of. What they might do to her. I left her. I left her. I left her. Jody, now's your chance to help her. All right? Yeah, maybe. Look, I just need some time to think alone. Okay? Okay. We're not here at the moment. But leave us a message and we'll get back to you. 
Adam, it's Jack. Just wanted to check you were okay. I'll try again later. Hi, it's Denise. We're not here at the moment, but leave us a message and we'll get back to you. Hi, it's Denise. We're not here at the moment, but leave us a message and we'll get back to you. Hi, it's Denise. We're not here at the moment, but leave us a message and we'll get back to you. Do you need a hand? Uh, I think I'm okay, thanks. I owe you an apology. What for? Well, I was short with you earlier. Oh, don't worry about it. If I've been through... No, come on. I shouldn't let the memory of Marilyn affect the way I treat people. It's no excuse and she wouldn't have wanted that. She was always so friendly, wasn't she? It's, it's fine, really. Those forms, I, I think Marilyn would have put them over here. So, sir. 171 from Sierra Oscar, can you deal? Labour is concerned about the welfare of residents at 10 Broom Lane. Yeah, I'm way, You okay? Yeah. Right, well, the first thing we need to do is get a statement from Jody. Details of the abuse, names of who was involved. This needs to be passed on to the child protection team. We need to concentrate on Kelly. You sure that Jody's telling the truth? Yes! I think she's a really sweet girl trying really, really hard to deal with what happened. Gov, she was repeatedly raped over a seven-year period. Mike and Lynn are going to deny that anything happened. It's going to be their word against their wayward daughters. We can't prove that Lynn has committed a crime. All she's done today is go see her daughter. So we have to wait until a new crime is committed? Unless Judy gives us a statement. Yeah, that's right. This noise has been going up for some time, has it been? Yes. I'll shut it down. Find her. Here on the floor. Clearly suicide. There's pills and alcohol. Did you know her? Yeah, I, I was here a while ago. She was upset. I, I think I pushed her too hard. I'm sure it wasn't anything you did. I need to see you. I saw you at the police station. I'm Superintendent Takara. Look, if it's about the accident, I've already... It is. It's my wife and family that died. I have to know what happened. I don't know. I've already told the police. I can't remember. Please. Tell me. No. You must go. Why? I can't do this! What did it mean? You killed my family. The least you can do is talk to me. Next time on The Bill. She said she was abused. You had the right to go raking over our past. Why are you pushing me away like this? There's nothing more I can do for you. You've got to take yourself back to your doctor.